Undead Unluck fans, it's your main man, Master Cell here, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table of Company 1, subscribe to the spin move. And Undead Unluck, even though you are kind of on a consensus basis when it comes to doing this, this episode I simply did not expect. This episode was wrong. Honestly, the biggest thing I expect, episode I didn't expect really was the fact that it was going to be a three-parter. That was about to figure something else. And even though I still slip kind of find Fuko to be cliche, she did it in a way here that kind of makes sense for her character. I'm just bouncing around the episode right now, right? But it's like this, right? You know when she made her big proclamation, her big dream, is what's the title of this episode? Basically, you know, it kind of felt like it came right out of an anime. Which, mind you, this girl's biggest pleasure is in life before meeting Andy was reading manga. Typically romance mangas, but yeah. Luca kind of just came off here as a big-ass anime fan, honestly. <laughs> the type of speech you would make or the type of speech you would write because you've seen animes before. And she really just put it in plain word what she always wanted the whole time. To be a normal girl. Just a, <laughs> it's funny how she had to say this against Spoil. Because he was talking about spoiling the bodies and stuff like that. Because without decay, things just get worse and worse. Without no, which, which makes no freaking sense. Maybe I missed something with that part. But what? Spoil what? But yeah, if was able to turn his terminology, put it on his head. Put her own thing out there. Make her own proclaims. And honestly, thinking about it, this is actually the first time in the series she's legitimately stated it like this. There's other things, it was, other moments, it was freaking obvious. I mean, she wanted to die in episode one. Episode two, she was kind of just along for the ride. And then, of course, there was episode three and four, well, episode four and five, rather, where she had made new plans when she joined the union. Something that I indeed highlighted to be her actual goal in the series, yes. But I, I guess, like I say, really, when it comes to favorite and best, what you think is your best and what you think is your favorite, there's a difference between dreams and goals. Her goal is to get in the union and change everything. Her dream, have a normal body and live a normal life. Which, when you think about it, kind of coincides with each other, don't they? Wow. Did Fuku really just have a I am him moment? By the way, when it comes to the difference between dreams and goals, I, I think Andy already knows about that. Andy dreamed the greatest death ever. What's his goal? To fuck Fuku. He's about to fuck Fuku raw. I mean, with a condom on, it's not going to have the same effect. And those genes coincide with each other as well. Watch your two the perfect pair. Anyways, getting back to the front of the episode, we come to find there is a, we indeed a way to boost up this timer. Timer just put on the abdomen of these kids as well as Fuku and Shen. Basically, it's their dreams. Even if they're small, it's just big dreams to them. This girl that sounds exactly like Anya from Spy Family, your cousin is in this episode. She simply just wanted to become a florist and give sunflowers to her teacher. And that was a big dream for her, big enough to raise her timer, which was almost running out back to 200,000, I believe. Which would be the max, you would think, until the man who wants to be the greatest in the world shows up and that thing just stuck going off the charts. Which feels like an epic foreshadow for next week, honestly. But the leader of this group of kids, not even self-proclaimed, Fuko gave him that title. Basically, he figured this out and he was telling them, be like, we know how to raise these timers up because we have ambitions and things we want to do with said teacher who is also in this town. So once again, he asked Fuko, are you for real about saving them? Which we already know is a yes. Your prayers have been answered, homeboy. All time Shannon just looking on. I hope that is a big foreshadow next week, what Shin said at the end of this episode, because all things considered, he hasn't done anything. Except <laughs> besides uh, pick up the strap. Why did he pick that strap up, the gun I'm talking about? Look at it for a decent amount of seconds, then just smiled. Either he realized that was a fake gun and mean there wasn't any real danger, or. Once again, foreshadowing? But they soon come to realize that there's an epic battle going on on the surface. They can climb up there, get up there off screen just, just to see Andy and the army of zombies. They're not actually zombies, but army of zombies. Going at a giant spoiler here. And while it is an impressive sight to see for Shin Fuku and the kids, it's not really doing anything. So Tim come to realize one of the zombies brutally runs right in front of Fuku and hits him in the face. What? And the unluck that is put on a spoiled zombie is simply for them to explode. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, there is indeed the teacher, Andy's zombie wife. A bride, they didn't finish the wedding or actually get married. Zombie bride to be. This awkward and hunger force reference. Bro, you got family this episode too? Wait, had Spongebob last week, what's going on for real? The teacher and the wife all being this one person. Basically the kids go see the teacher and well, Andy throws the teacher at Shin to catch because she's well, I guess it's easier to fight holding Fuko than it is of holding a zombie. And the kids recognize her immediately, and she, not being 100% spoiler, recognized the kids. 
And as anybody would be, including myself, Bruco was just concerned about what would happen in these two scenes, sure, the sight of seeing the show, seeing the t shirt, all of a sudden being spoiled. But it kind of just went about it like it was nothing. Which tells me two things. At an age, love is that strong to kind of transcend these moments, appearance, appearances, and yeah. Or B, the zombie teacher just glad to see the kids again, but even with the dreams and stuff in mind, the kids already damn sure knew that the teacher. But even that mini flashback they had, the teacher was already decaying right before their eyes, even though she told them she wasn't going to die without having a man take her down the aisle. Now that I think about it more, I think it is the second one. They already accepted what's going on, and the fact that they got to see each other again, even under these conditions, is a simply a blessing they was not expecting. Take your wins as they come, take your wins when they come. Even having the zombie teacher say thank you. She was kind of bad when she was uh, <laughs> original form, y'all. Even earlier when I seen them jeans, uh, the teacher got some ass on them. They haven't had legitimate fan service in this show for a minute. Oh wait, Andy's naked next week in the preview, huh? You what I'm talking about. I'm about to get turned on by no abdomen. Get that midriff, or them jeans. And no shin doesn't count either. I noticed that man don't wear no drawers. This is an episode about zombies. So since we come to find that the zombies blow up, it, by gaining Fuko's unluck, Andy comes up with the idea of all the zombies making one last go, touching Fuko and going over there and blowing the spoil. Which, even for zombies, spoiled zombies, is simply insensitive. But Fuko was like, are you serious? However, leading this charge, the zombie teacher immediately just hugs Fuko. Which kind of leads me back to my first point of people knowing their fate. I mean, she kind of knows what's going on. And I guess all these considered, if I was a zombie with a conscience and knew it was over, and I had one last chance to get back at the bastard. I ain't saying I would, but I'm damn sure not saying I wouldn't. And really, despite the big speech that Fuko gave here, we really had the MVP moment here of the zombie running towards Spoil, the zombie used to teach her wife. But you notice that she was running, slowly running, and trying to move over there as fast as she can to the point where she kicked off those wedding heels. It just started running regularly, even with holding the dress up, just then it started taking off. Just one last gas, it just putting the pedals in the metal. And letting out a zombie scream as she was doing it, but that one was a mm, kind of thing, like an actual legitimate woman screaming while she, not even screaming, just juggling into one last attack. We spoiled, tried to spoil by simply just picking her up. However, that's not how unluck works, bitch. Something was weird about this unluck though, because it's like, he blew up. <laughs> But it didn't take a, it took a while for her to blow up. Like he kind of tripped over a bomb thing, and then it started to blow up. And it's kind of weird because, like, I understand it took a minute for this unluck to happen, anyways, because the teacher hugged Fuko for regular longer than a regular amount of time. But did the unluck kind of transfer the spoil when he picked up the girl that was supposed to get hit with the unluck? You ever had an instance like that happen before? But for him to trip over a bomb <laughs> store. Just for her to blow up and set up all those bombs, it seems kind of like. Even if it wasn't that, then the teacher's unluck happened in stages? Kind of weird. Might have to look into that one. I hope they don't leave that one alone. Fuko's unluck definitely needs more explanation. Then, of course, the zombies all just go by, start just running past Fuko. Fuko tries to touch them, but it, it becomes apparent that she starts. they start running into her, which had to be a pain at some point, or just painful. I know they're not the Jimmy zombies again, but yeah, the zombies don't have restraints when it comes to their streams, so they kind of just running into Fuko here. I'm surprised she just ran over. And another stroke of realism I have to point out you know, it's just when those zombies were running towards spoil, some of them was exploding the second they hit them, but some of them looked like they were exploding beforehand. It was all coming in one sweet, one sweet, one uh, one shot where they always kind of just running towards one point. Some of them jumped on and spo exploded, but some of them kind of the explosion happening before they got to spoil. I mean, the timing was off on some of those, and it's kind of just like that just made it feel more real just watching it like that. Now, eventually, that Andy gets the unfortunate news that and that Shin and Fuko is indeed have a timer on their adamants. You can tell by facial expressions, it severely pissed Andy off. We can come to the conclusion that they have to legit, indeed, legitimately kill Spoil about and capture him. Which Shin was against, but Shin, aren't you dead if you don't? Now, this next part with Spoil sucking up all the zombies, I'll keep it a buck 50 with y'all. That's when Chick fil A was knocking nothing though. DoorDash. I didn't exactly get the explanation that I probably should have gotten, but I, I, I gotta be watching that. Should I pause this video and do that? But basically, after sucking in all the zombies, right before he was about to lose, Spoil becomes a new being. I guess he evolves, sort of, in a sort of speak. He evolves into a form where basically not only is he stronger and faster, his range of doing that spoil thing is stronger too. Because Andy goes over there to try to beat his ass, but he gets 
taken out by the spoiler ability long before he even makes it close enough to hit him. But last time, Shin, next week, do something. What was this? And then that eventually leads into the moment we were talking about earlier with Fuko, her I am him moment. <laughs> I guess I should start saying I am her, right? Gender roles is gender roles. I'm not saying if it's the thing, I'm saying gender roles is gender roles. But Jimmy just be a normal girl. I'm pretty sure that she identifies as a woman. But how come Fuko wasn't affected at all by being that close to Spoil? Spoil got real close. And he tried to move up against it and got melted damn near. <laughs> Fuko was just able to just stand there, even with her timer slowly going out. This unluck needs to be explained. Like, I hate to say this, but it kind of gets to the point where you're like, I can see why these motherfuckers <laughs> wanted to just kidnap Fuko and just examine her before she joined the unit. In hindsight, that just felt OP. But yeah, just not to just talk about the ending over again, that's pretty much it. This has been an episode for real. A lot of things kind of stacked up here. It's not even done. The grand finale, so to speak, is next week. I assume so, because everything else is kind of out of the way now. Hyping it up by saying Andy's going to be taking that card that's in his head out just to continue this match. Andy's going to be going in. Spoiler's already in his final form, presumably. Shin is foreshadowing him going in. And Fuko is already breaking the rules. Negating the rules. So yeah, I gotta be real, the hype is kinda real next week. That being said, let's keep this hype train going. Go watch this video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to this pin move. Mm -hmm.